All right, I figured I'd make a little video on how to get a decent little dev environment set up for working with standard ML. Um, we learned some SML for a really awesome class uh, about programming languages at UVU, but I noticed a lot of students hated working in it. And then I learned that many of them were simply trying to write their whole scripts in the REPL, which personally is a huge pain in the butt to me. Um, Maybe if you're doing really small things, it's fine, but when you're doing a lot more, it's much better to have a decent environment to work in. So I'll show you how I set it up, and maybe that can help other people. Um, first, you just, this, this is the Windows version. I'll maybe do like a Mac version too. I actually primarily work in Mac and or Linux. Uh, <laughs> um, and or. Uh, so anyway, go to the, just Google standard ML of New Jersey if you want and go here uh, downloads uh, well let's see where is the download here we go so um, SML 1030 so this should be the latest one Microsoft Windows install is just a little MSI um, I've already uh, installed it though so we'll just pretend like I ran through the installer it's really simple um, so as soon as you have that, um, you can open up your command prompt, or I'm using Commander, but it's same thing. Oops. Um, so, uh, like before, I was I was saying uh, most students just kind of run SML. That's the little command to get into the REPL, and you can do uh, you know really basic things. Uh, A B equals A plus B. Just like writing a little function, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then testing it out, and you can get that, you know. But uh, then you have to like exit out of it and stuff. It's it's just weird. So um, you can also uh, make like a little SML file. This is much easier because then you can version control it and reference back to it all the time. Um, and and uh, you can use like a full-on editor to work with them. So in order to run that, you can just run SML and then the file name and it'll run it, but it'll keep you in the REPL if you notice. So, um, which you can, you can actually rerun that function again. It's kind of cool. Um, but uh, what's even better in my opinion is it, this is what I did at least. Uh, you can go and download Visual Studio Code, um, free open source editor from Windows. Really cool. Um, I already have it installed, the code. And um, you see here when you open this file, it's just like a colored like a plain text white file. So you can actually, it'll suggest you the marketplace has an extension that can help with .sml files. So search marketplace and it'll open up this and give you this, uh, this standard ML uh, plugin that somebody already made, which is really sweet. So install that. And once it's done, come on, you can re hit reload. It'll now, I think it'll bother you a little bit about, uh, oh, it didn't. Oh, oops. Let me see something really quick. It might have kept my settings from before. Yeah, okay. So if you go in here, it, it might bother you about uh, some missing JSON file, sml.json or something. Um, I already had this setting in here. Here, I'll show you even. Um, So if I go back to this file, oh, maybe if I close it and reopen it, oh my gosh, what the heck? Oh, well, hello. <laughs> so you can uh, just click edit the setting. If you, by the way, this is the user settings. You can find it uh, a few different ways, but um, if you just search SML in here, it'll bring up the SML plugin settings and you can say ignore missing SML dot file. So I hit that, I made that true save that and then it doesn't bother you anymore if it is bothering you so now you can edit it and there's even like uh let's see like i think there's even like yeah there's <laughs> like full-on uh, snippets in here which is kind of sweet so it's a decent little plugin it's nothing crazy but um 
And then you can, you know, edit and then run, and then edit and then run, you know. So just makes it a little easier to work with, and you can version control it. Um, but there is one more thing to uh, a little tip that I found where you can um, actually include this line at the bottom. Uh, think of this like um, like in C++ or, or uh, C, you know, at the uh, maybe at the end of your main, you return zero. So you can actually do that with this, and it'll exit out of the REPL for you after, right after running the file. So then you don't have to. Um, whoops. Um, so os.process.exit equals or and then hand it the os.process.success. Save that, and now if you run it, it'll finish the whole thing, which is really cool. Oh, um. I already set this. This is another. Uh, um, let's see how do how we do this. Uh, CM. Okay. Wait. I am uh, so used to Mac now. Oh my gosh. CM. So um, this command right here. Uh, I set this environment variable when I run the SML example. Um, and so you can actually. So if I set this to true, um, this is just setting an environment variable in Windows. Set cm verbose. This is like saying I think it's like the uh, the the compiler for SML or or whatever. Uh, you can set the verbosity to to true or false. And if you set it to true, you'll notice like if you include os.process.exit, um, it'll give you all this garbled stuff down here about auto loading. It's, it, and so you can just set that to false, and um, that way, oh crap, hopefully this is easy to see on the screen. Anyway, um, I will include some of this information in a little uh, git gist on GitHub or something and post it in the notes below. But um, yeah, so just makes for developing a lot quicker. Uh, you'll learn maybe more about Val and the underscore and everything later. Uh, you can ask your teacher. But um, this just is a nice way of exiting out of the REPL, and so it doesn't stay in it as you're doing this and going back and forth and stuff. And, and you could uh, make a make file or something that will maybe run multiple files in, in one command or something like that. So it's really kind of nice. So anyway, I think that is it. Let me know if you have any questions.